Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 23. This tutorial we are going to make this scene look a little bit more haunting than what it does because it doesn't really fit in with our game. So we're going to be doing some more post-processing but we're going to experiment with something a little different with it. Uh, we're going to create a little bit of fog, basically bring some over from our other scene and we're also going to deal with some wind zones. Don't forget click the subscribe button then click the bell icon to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload to my channel. With that in mind let's get to work. So, how do we actually deal with post-processing to make this look a little bit more haunting? Thank you, Malware Bytes. I will update you in a moment. So, the scene itself is rather colourful. Uh, what I would like to do is actually bring in a nighttime skybox. And if we head to the Asset Store, and let's just search for Night Sky Box. And as always, click on Free. Now, the one I've gone for is just simply this one. Um because, well, it's a nighttime skybox. You don't have to use this one. Indeed, you don't even have to use the skybox, but I feel I just want to add a little bit more to this scene. So if you want this, same as me, click on import or download, bring it into your scene. And uh, skybox, basically, you know, it, it, it covers the sky. <laughs> what more can I say about it? So a skybox is going to replace all of this up here because in our other scene, I don't think we actually had a skybox. I can't remember. Uh, either way, Basically, top and bottom of it, we need to go to Window, go to Rendering, and go to Light Settings. And here in our Skybox material, we just need to set any Skybox that we've imported. And we can just click the little button next to it and type Sky, and there we are. So we'll go with Night Sky 2, I guess. Now, what we need to do here to give this even more of an eerie feel is we can actually kind of replicate a little bit of our post-processing that we've done previously. So with our camera, let's actually set this in up in the correct way as we've done previously with other cameras and set our rendering path to deferred and untick multi-sample anti-aliasing. So let's go to our post-processing and is it in runtime? Yes, so that is our original uh, post-processing profile. So I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm actually going to leave it as it is, but minus the space. So JVSH1. So let's now apply this to our camera. So let's bring over the script. And then on the main camera, just apply that over there. And let's turn it on in our scene. So let's select this option here and change to add image effects so we can see it. So the best thing for us to do now is I feel having it kind of a bit black and white and creepy looking is going to be the best way to open up a game. Because as I said, this is the intro scene. This is what we're going to use to introduce to our game. And the whole premise of it is we're a guy creeping around in the woods. Something happens to us and then we end up being kidnapped. And that's why we built that other scene. So to do this, we can actually change a few settings within the post-processing profile itself. So let's get a black and white feel. And we can do this by changing a couple of options in the color grading. I don't think we need to have it quite as high with the post exposure. So if we set it to zero, a bit dark, let's have it as two. So the key to getting this right is playing around with these options. Obviously you can play around with the temperature and give it that kind of vibrant look if you want to. But the one we want to play with is saturation. Saturation will remove all the colors and give it a monotone look. You can also play around with contrast to give you an even more kind of bleak look if you want to. But I'm going to leave the contrast fairly high and leave, probably leave the temperature as zero just to give it that proper black and white feel. Uh, post exposure two, I'm still not sure about. Maybe, I think maybe 1.5 possibly. So next thing I want to do is add a dirt texture to the lens of this um, profile and that is done in Bloom. So in Bloom under dirt select that option and it'll give you a couple of uh, options to deal with but what we need to look for is dirt and we have lens dirt. So let's add uh, let's add number one. So lens dirt 0001 uh, I should say 
And you can see, hopefully on the screen, just how much of an impact that will have, especially if you change the intensity. So let's have the intensity up quite high and change through these. And you can see how it's affected the camera. So I kind of maybe want to go with two. So let's go with two, have the intensity as maybe three, like it was originally. Again, it's your game. You play around with these settings. You, you know what you want. But already you can see how this game is looking. It's, kind of, it's looking a lot creepier than what it was. So if we, re we remove the image effects, we can see that's how it was. That's how it is now. So let's add some of those fog drifts that we have right here. So we created those in our first scene. So I'm going to save the scene. I'm going to head back into um, our original scene that we started creating, which is, I think it's directly in the top, isn't it? There we are. So we have mm -mm, scene 001, I think. It'll take just a moment to bring that up. So it's fairly easy to bring um, assets from one scene to another. So I'm simply going to take the particle system, copy it, head back into our intro scene, head to where our camera is. And I'm going to paste it just in front of the camera here, or rather place it rather than paste. So let's see how this looks. If I bring this here and then press play and let's just see how this looks from our camera's perspective. Can't really see much, can we? So let's click back on our scene view, our fog, and let's increase the start color to see where the fog is at. So I'm not convinced it's behaving the right uh, I think because it's below the terrain way below the terrain so let's let's press uh, play again come back so it's it is under the terrain that's my fault so let's bring it over here if I can actually grab the arrow there we go so I'm taking more time than I would actually like at this point so let's press play and try this out again, see how it looks. Still can't see it. How is it still under the terrain? I think it might be too high now. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to increase the alpha a bit. Maybe increase the size as well. possibly decrease the alpha there it's quite large and let's see how this looks in the game view okay so i can see the problem we're kind of not where we should be we need to be in this clearing right here so again i'm, I'm waste i digress with this you know i'm wasting more time than i would like with this so it's up to you if you want to have the whole fog effect thing going on uh, there are different ways of adding fog you don't necessarily have to use a particle system um it's it really is entirely up to you so let's increase the radius let's also rotate 90 degrees bring it this way and maybe duplicate rotate by minus 90 and bring it completely the other way somewhere here so one more time i'm going to check this one more time we should see something now at least I can just about see. Let's change the alpha so we can see where it's coming from. So this is the beauty of game development, or rather, <laughs> not the beauty. You have to kind of take your time, build what you're doing, be careful with it, do what you need to do. So I think the fog effects here probably need to be much larger. So what I'm going to do is take them and finally maybe increase the size. So let's maybe have it instead of one. Let's see what it looks like with 10. That might be a little bit much, but let's see. Might give some kind of effect. Okay, 
Yeah, I'm happy with that. That'll do. So if you want that kind of effect, work with that. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is wind zones. What is a wind zone? A wind zone allows us to see these trees move with wind, as you would expect. So to get that, game object, 3D object, and we have down here, wind zone. Already we should be able to see some movement within our scene. Um, basically, there are two options we can have with a wind zone, a directional and spherical. Directional will affect everything in the direction that the wind is blowing. Spherical will create a kind of a sphere around where you would want it to be affected. So for example, if we had it on spherical and only had it in this section here, it would mean that only these trees would be affected by the wind. So if I were to press play now, the fact it's on directional, we should see all the trees affected by the wind. Now, obviously, we could change this as and when we need to. But you've got to be careful you don't end up freaking Unity out because that just looks crazy. Unless you are going for that kind of effect, that's probably not the best thing to do. The default settings are fairly decent here and it's not as though they're bad but it's probably worth playing around with the wind zone changing the rotation and you can see if i constantly change the rotation the trees are also affected all that's doing is changing the literal direction the wind zone is so if i double click on it and start changing it you can see the arrow that is the way the wind is facing So even though it's all the way over here, it's affecting everything that would normally be affected by wind, as we can see. Hence the whole reason this is happening in our scene now. So play around with the wind zone, play around with the pulse frequency. You'll see what happens with that because, well, again, if we like have uh, hovered over the frequency of the wind pulses, that basically gives like blustery sections with your wind zone. So what I would recommend at this point is if you're going for the same style as me, play around with what you have, try and get the right kind of feel, the right kind of emotion in your game, and aim for it. Take the time, don't rush, work with light, work with everything you have to your disposal. There we go, now that looks kind of cool. Whether I'll stick with that, I, I don't know. But um, while I quickly play around with some of these settings, I might stick with that actually. So I have that with 1.5, but a very minimal directional light. So next tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry on with this. We're gonna animate our camera. We're gonna have some subtitles and we're gonna have some ambient music, much like we have before. So maybe some blustery wind going on maybe. Um, and we'll see where we get with that. Let's change the light to brilliant white. Increase the intensity to maybe there. Uh, rendering light settings, let's have this as just ever so slightly, maybe there. And let's see how that looks. So yeah, next tutorial, we're going more and more into this and it's going to start looking really, really cool. Uh, we're going to bring in some more assets soon as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.